back, DDC TV. Yeah. You already know what it is. You already know what it is. My brothers. Yes, sir. Here with none other than hometown knee high. You know what I'm saying? East side. finest. Yes, sir. Mr. Moss B. That's me. That's Mr. Me. Moss B. Yeah, man, that's what, that's what some people call me. Know by, streets, known man. by many names. Yeah, man, I got a, I got a few, I got a few, few, a few foolish stories out there in the street, man. Hopefully, I can, I can outlive those. Well, not known by too many, but known by the right ones. Mm-hmm. And um, you have definitely had quite an experience so far. You know what I'm saying? And in your life and what you've done and. I just want to set the table for you so the people out here can really understand, you know, what you've done and what you continue to do as a pillar in the community. So I hear you have like a clothe the homeless movement going on. Tell us about that. Well, um, I started it. I had a homeboy, Chef Marlowe, he used to feed the homeless. So I wanted to add a different entity to it, which was I wanted to clothe the homeless. So uh, we kind of grouped and linked together. And you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to like, man, I've done so much fucked up shit in my past. It's like, it's almost me repaying and re, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get my karma back right. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Plus that, that's that's in me anyway. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So I wanted to, I just love my people. So it's almost like a throwback of the, of the Black Panthers movement to feed the hungry clothes. So that's what I want to do. Like I'm a revolutionary anyway. So like I want I want to start in my own community and do it. So I got my partner Chef Marlowe while he was feeding them. I said, nigga, I got a clothing. We gotta put something on their back. So that's that's really where it came from, like something from my heart that I wanted to give back to the people. Okay, so how do you do it? Like like how often do you do it? Like what, we was where do you trying, go? man, it's actually been a while since I've done it because I got so much going on. We was doing it once a month at one point in time. Okay. We was doing it once a month. And uh, when we was doing it once a month, it blew up. And my whole thing was trying to, it wasn't, I was trying to bring light to it. So I was trying to get all my rap partners, like Scotty AT, that was his partner, right. Bob, other people, to see. And once they, they, they started getting into it, once they got to it, they like, man, this shit is dope. At first, they were bucking. It wasn't that they didn't want to do it. Right, they right. just didn't understand what it was. And so. I had a couple other homeboy. They like to go. I think most people do it for social media reason to look good, right? My whole thing is when I take people out there, I say, "Nigga, talk to them, ask them a story." And they get just like you. They get right. the pads and shit out, but they don't get. The, I'm like, "Nigga, they like you." Then once you get to talking to them and it gets personal, then that shit hits you. You know what I'm saying? And they tell you different stories, and there's different stories that you can relate to yourself. So then you know what I'm saying? That's that's why I think well, trade the truth. All speaking kind of, of stories, like you a man of many stories. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things like I think a lot of people like about being around you is because you're like a community great storyteller. Yeah, you're great, you're, great you're, storyteller. You're, you're like the community storyteller. You've kind of been out on all the fringes and seen a little bit of everything. Can I can I can I can I, can I tell you something? Why I got my great storyteller from? Uh, this is a true story, man. This is real shit. This is musical too. So my uncle Lionel Richie rap. So I remember this, man. When I was younger, this motherfucker used to be telling stories, right? Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. And I was a kid. legend. And my and little Nicole be with my mom and my aunt, because my aunt is my mom's so, so she be like, don't listen to that nigga, he lying. Da 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 da. <laughs> and I be like, I just be like, did what he tell you. He'd be like, I like and I'd be mesmerized. But I realized that's why he was such a great songwriter. Right. Because he could put that thing into a story. You know what I'm saying? Like, it stored them. But they were real. They were a story. And so I think a lot of things, when when he was doing stuff, his antics, the way he moved, like, it kind of washed off on me over the time. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. So are you, like, a big Lionel Richie fan? Definitely. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Is he, is he held in the highest esteem? One of the greatest uh, in your book? fucking devil. <laughs> Every single one of my albums, I definitely use a Lionel Richie song and a sample in it. Okay, okay. Well, what are your other, give me four or five other of your greats in terms of musical influences on your life? First, it would have to be, uh, one of my main would have to be Chuck D. 
So Public Enemy was my first the backbone of my revolution, me being a revolutionary when I was younger. So I was on, I remember when I was at Camby Lane Elementary, it was me and my partner, Charlie. So, you know, back in the day, you used to have clubs in elementary school right. where you make the little, the little papers thing. You have a badge. Nigga, our club was Public Enemy. I was Chuck D. He was Flavor Flay. <laughs> nigga, you couldn't be in the Public Enemy club. Nigga, you, let, you had to have your shit together. Right. This can't be laying elementary. So that would be one. Of course, as I grew over the years, I'm going to give you my dad gave me one. Like one time I was younger. And I was in my bedroom, my dad threw a tape on the on on the on the bed. I didn't even know who the fuck this nigga was, right? I'm gonna tell you the story. <laughs> he said, hey man, listen to this nigga. This this nigga got something to tell you right here. This motherfucker, he for real. Guess what it was? Tupac, Tupac. Okay. So okay. my dad introduced me to my dad introduced So your dad me. put you on a Tupac? Definitely. Okay, so uh, he was coming with the real end. Yeah. So like that shit come from somewhere. So then after that. I went through my foolish stage. I went. I got out to go with Wu Tang. I had my New York stage. So I wanted to be different in the in the and shit. Then I came back around as Player Fly and Triple C. And Tommy Wright. All right, and let's just pause right there because Memphis and Atlanta have a special relationship when it comes to music, cultural exchange, and. Um, Back in the 90s was really when it really became a real movement in terms of Memphis music coming to Atlanta. And I know that you and everybody pretty much we grew up with, you know, was some of the first people on the east side to really be like the pioneers and, 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 and run with the torch of the genius and sound of Memphis. You know what I'm saying? And, so like, I mean, I think like what you did was like a self-fulfilled prophecy. Like, I don't know how you end up doing what you did, but. Well, <laughs> if you want to know the, the Memphis connection, how the Memphis connection started with me, I tell you, from beginning to, you know what I'm saying, from the beginning. So at the time, my best friend, I was in, I was in high school. My best friend was Polo the Dog. So we had, you know what I'm saying, we used to do music in his mom's downstairs in the basement. Yeah, I remember y'all just coming through with Polo. Yeah, so at the time, Polo's brother and his sister, the Quay, it was Quay Bogo, he was popping, and his sister was Carisha, Riri. So they had a deal, and they, it was it was with these, these motherfuckers, really the biggest dope motherfuckers ever. They were called 40 Street Records, right? So at the time, I had a partner named Mike, he saw his brand new 3 6 album and shit from goddamn Memphis, right? So it was a girl on that bit, on that Gangsta Boo, I actually like. So, and Skinny Pimp, so we, me and your brother grew up listening to Coops and then Skinny Pimp, all this shit. So we listened to these albums, right? They were tapes. So one white day- White tapes. They were tapes, clear with the white label. Yeah, the white tapes. Yeah, so what happened was this. I was already kind of mixed in music with Polo and that. So one day, it's me and Polo riding in his mama camera, and and the Quay like, yeah, we gotta go out here and uh do this song with Skinny Pimp. I'm like, Skinny Pimp? <laughs> Skinny Pimp Memphis? He like, yeah, I said, nigga, you gotta take me to the studio. You gotta take me to the studio, this underground motherfucker. All our friends did not fuck. We had a special clique that fucked with Memphis music. Niggas in Atlanta did not fuck with that shit. But took me to the studio to meet Skinny. I'm in that nigga, I'm talking shit to Skinny. He's like, nigga, these tastes are made it to Memphis? I said, yeah, nigga, I fuck with you. I'm a fan of that. I said, this I, this some weird shit. So I was like, man, this is one girl, gangsta boo, man. She da 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 da. I said, I fuck with her. She tight. I don't even know what she look like. There wasn't no pictures of none of that shit. <laughs> He's like, man, I can call Lola right now. So he called up on the phone. Me and her get to talking on the phone. We exchange numbers. And that's how that relationship started with me and her. So, so, Skinny Pimp is the one who introduced you to Gangsta Boo. Gangsta Boo, yep. He was signed with 40 Street Records. Here in Atlanta. I remember 40 Street. 40 Street Records. 40 okay. Street, they were the BMF before BMF. Gotcha. I remember 40 Street. Oh. They were the dope niggas that were trying to find motherfucking money to dump off their artists. So they found Quake, Riri, da 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 da. And when I heard it, I just happened to be in the kitchen 
in the car. So I heard the last time you gotta take me to the studio, Quay. Quay, Quay, you remember this story? Skinny, me and Skinny still talk about this story. Cause it might have been some of the worst shit he ever did was hooking me up with it. But we didn't talk about that a little deep. Wait, okay, so all right, so you started talking to Boo, and then you in Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta. And y'all started talking. We and both then, in high school. But when did you actually first meet her and how did y'all kick it so off? So this is what happened. She the members, she's in the projects and some other shit. We talking back and forth on the phone. I told Polo, I said, I had a Honda Civic, right? I think I was in 11th grade, 12th. Some, I was 11th, 12th grade. I said, Polo, I, my parents had gave me this BP gas card in case anything went wrong, right? So I said, yes, Polo. I said, Polo, you gotta ride me out here to Memphis, man. I gotta see this. I gotta go see her. I gotta go see her. See what she look like, da da da. da. He said, nigga, I'm gonna ride with you. It came time to what's time to ride. He said, nigga, I'm not riding with you. <laughs> so I'm out there. I said, fuck it, nigga. But I wasn't, I had a curfew. I wasn't supposed to, nigga. I jumped on the road to go to Memphis six hours to see this hell. To see Lo. See Gangsta Book. Rolled all the way to Memphis. It was worth it, though, huh? At that point in time, it, it wasn't a kickoff. It was. But in hindsight, making the connection. We connect, it was cool. Like, we yeah. we had a friend. So when I saw her, I never get this shit. We was in the hood somewhere. And uh, I was drunk. By the time I got there, I got drunk. I was drinking hurricanes all the way up there. And she had told me something like, if you don't like what you see, da -da -da, you can leave. I left. <laughs> so. I left, but you don't you don't pick who you fall in love with your friends unless you I left. I almost died to come back. I had that BP card. I had number the BP card. Drove all that that's 12 hours. I'm trying to make it back before my nigga. I ain't gonna make it back for my curfew. I had to pull over damn near die. Nigga, I'm in high school. That's the introduction. Introduction to Memphis. Wait a minute. So you you was in high school and you thought you was gonna make it back for curfew? Driving Stupid. six hours there. I wasn't supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be there. So when you finally came back, what time was it? Like It was the next day. The next day. And what your parents say? Man, shit, they probably said any other time. You yeah. snapped on me some other shit. Yeah. I can't, re I can't really remember that part. I feel I feel Okay. Well, let's take it back a little bit because I want to set the table for even before, you know, that time. Sure. And the years in the middle the 90s when Freaknik was really prevalent. Really like- It was around that time too. Early, early, middle, and even into the late 90s. Yeah, I think Freaknik was popping around 94 when I was exactly. able, when I was able to get into it. Nigga, I met Lola around this same time, 95. Right, right. right. So, Freaknik, go ahead. So, so, so the question is like, what do you think Freaknik did for Atlanta? Like, how did Freaknik, like, think about the movement of Freaknik and what that really meant for I'm gonna tell you what, Freaknik the exchange over, it, of Atlanta. It kind of overexposed Atlanta. I'm gonna tell you, Atlanta was already a party city. Back in the day, I made this post not too long ago. I said, back in the day when we came up, nigga, you had to be cool to get some pussy. Nigga, one that money shit, one none of that, but I remember when Puff Daddy and them niggas came in and ruined everything in Atlanta with the money and shit with the strip club. Back when you, me and your brother Keith, nigga, yeah, nigga, round round. Rabbits with five stars, niggas were dancing. It was a party city. It was about nigga like Jerome Road parties, nigga. Everybody, you go to the party, nigga, everybody got drunk for free. They kicked it, they danced, had a good time. Wasn't no goddamn wallflowers. Nigga, it was cool. You had to be cool. So what happened was Freaknik kind of over, cause it invited everybody into our little own little guard and our own little cool shit. So when they saw that shit, you gotta think these niggas lame as fuck coming from their bitch, right? Coming in. Nigga, they lame as fuck. They come in, they can't figure out how to get the bitches fuck these whole nigga. They get all kind of shit at. These motherfuckers so that when the money started kicking in. Oh, we're gonna start buying pussy. We gonna start goddamn making it rain. Man, these niggas lame as fuck. Man. Wait, man, I I I remember a story of you twirling a wig on Counter Road. That wasn't Counter Road. It wasn't was Counter Road. Where was that? Was was the Counter? No, no, that shit was on the west side. It was on the west side. You know, it's so you know, it's like you just gotta be kind of thankful that they have 
certain social media. Ah, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I thank you God every day and and you evolved, that they and didn't have social media up. when I came. I thank God every goddamn day we didn't have social media. So, so I get why y'all be fucking yourselves up. Don't think I don't. My job is to prevent y'all so you don't fuck yourselves up. I love to you. Everything I do is, we made so many bad decisions when we was younger, man. So I think it's I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. For me, it was a bad thing, but it's a good thing because now I can pass on lessons. And like, I'm relatable. So all the children, like, motherfuckers' children fuck with me more than they got their parents. You know what I'm saying? They're their parents. I like, dog, that because y'all don't be real with the children. You know what I'm saying? So all my mistakes, they all smart. my they going, smart. all my using cocaine, getting locked up, being shot, shooting, all my fucked up shit, it was able to round me to be the man that I am today to save motherfuckers. Like, I don't give a fuck about me. I don't give a fuck more about me once I start having a, a, a family and some other different things. We ain't gonna go too deep into that. Okay, okay, so. I want to take it back to the dance side of things. Gotcha. Because people used to dance in Atlanta. Yes. Like Atlanta actually had a real still, signature dance, dance movie. Still got a dance coach. It still does, but. Let's come back. Hey, dog. I'm talking about real Atlanta. Hey, dog. The old Atlanta. Guess what they call it? The Yeekers. The Yeekers. Uh, they got Yeek ATL. We got A Dog. they coming back. Yeek ATL, A Dog, my partner A Dog, one of the rich. Can we get them in here? And we can get them in here whenever you're ready. All right, that's what we're trying to do. We Yeek ATL will be here. We just want to give you the torch. That's no problem. All right, all right. You got A Dog, you got Bounce Master J. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember Bounce Master J. Yeah, we're fine, we're <laughs> fine, nah. fine. Hey, yo, what? We're, we're still doing. Matter of fact, this this Friday, Sharon Showcase, we're doing the Ego. Okay, okay. Classic story 3 6 Mafia. Comes to Atlanta. Yeah. Five, five, nine in the golden age. Yeah. What yeah. golden age? What golden age? The golden what? age of party scene in Atlanta yeah, when gotcha. the West End used to be locked up. You couldn't even go nowhere. Car to car, bumper traffic. Gotcha. On Lee Street. So tell us about, you know, your well, interactions with 3 6 and. Well, actually, shit, by that time, me and Lola, we in and out, in, you know what I'm saying, on and off, in and out, that kind of shit. So what happened when they came to five by nine? Of course, I'm bringing my partners with me. She's like, yeah, we got a short five by nine. I bring my partners with me. We on stage. Now, they still, they three six, but they not three six. You know what I'm saying? They not nationwide. They got a buzz underground. So, as the buzz they got underground, we get on stage. They made, they made the worst decision ever, right? I'll never forget this shit, D. So, we on stage and shit, B, D, and Jerry, right? These motherfuckers had these promotional tapes and started throwing them out in the crowd. Like, oh no, y'all are not this cool in Atlanta yet. Like niggas know y'all. They was like tear the club up or some shit. That, that, that. Man, them tapes coming back like frisbees now. <laughs> you, you want that? You remember that? I remember. You remember that, that now? I remember now. Nigga, we was in that suit, suit, I was like, nigga, why did y'all keep when they were throwing the tapes? Throw these tape, nigga. We, in, we on the west side, nigga. These niggas looking for a weapon. And they don't know y'all, nigga. Just yeah. to be asshole. Yeah. You remember that shit? I remember it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, nice. so that, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's what happened that day. We got people walking in on the interview. We got niggas with big ass beards walking in, fucking up the interview and shit. He all right, though. But the interview gonna get done, man. It's yeah. all good. Nah, nah, that's funny, because, um, like, there's a whole dispute you know, between Memphis. And what? I straight no, no, up no, no, all the disputes. No, 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 no. The, no, it, the dispute or the claim. Let me say it's a claim. A claim of what? Was that, Crunk? That, that Crunk was started in Memphis. 3-6 Mafia started Crunk, number one. And Memphis is responsible for trap music. And uh, they, they, they got They got a good influence on I'm going to tell you. Nigga, I'm, you want to know who started Crunk? Nigga, it might be me, nigga. My motherfuckers talking that shit. Lil John riding the skateboard, nigga. All them nigga, all these niggas around here talking about that crunk shit, nigga. You can add this nigga here. Who the fuck was the wildest nigga in the world? Adding the fool hey, jumping around in the club. You Wait. know, the crunkest man alive was 
a name that you rightfully earned, I must say so myself. But let's, hold up, then, before I even go there, now Memphis did have some buck shit, they were, but guess what? They was a huge influence on me, I agree. So it, it was a little bit of both. It was a little bit of both. I think okay. I okay. think I think everybody had their time, and it was a it was a boiling pot and a bubbling pot at the same time. I think it was like that because Memphis and Atlanta are so similar at the time before the, the motherfuckers came in. But right? now, they fucked but up. now, now let's clarify though and speak more about because Atlanta has different sides to it. And, it does, and, and so it was more of the so, east side that I. I so so east side we was we was known as car thieves, wild niggas, crawl niggas, and 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 the west side niggas more like some pimp type niggas, right? So let me let me say this. When it comes to that buck shit and the crunk shit, when I mean by Memphis and Atlanta was around the same time, you we had the gate. We had uh Sharon Showcase, and then across the way, you had MBK. We had five by nine. What else they had over there? Going even further back, you had club access. You had club access. No but shit, if you had clubs, nigga, nigga club self doing it. <laughs> they were hitting that shit. They just wanted to be in the camera and got them hit that. I couldn't go to club it says. Them niggas were going to club it says. I couldn't get in there. But I could watch that shit on TV. It was public access. And I see this motherfucker on TV. <laughs> <laughs> hit that thought and show it. So like that. But it's just like that with all um, Memphis shit. Like they bought like, so you had gangster walking and you had up, man, that shit wasn't no crunk shit. But you had, it was different eras of shit. Yeah. Like then you had motherfuckers like, nigga, I wasn't no dancing there, nigga. So I push you and we get to fight, like that kind of shit. So then you did have some dancing there, nigga. So it's two different entities and two, and you know what I'm saying, the same shit on both sides. Well, I feel like a lot of things from the east side got co-opted by Atlanta. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like the east side, side stomp. stomp. Nigga, that's turn, us. Turn we into stomp. the ATL blow, stomp. Blowhead. Nigga, it ain't, it ain't never been no ATL. How the fuck did it ever come to ATL stomp? I know the nigga that made it up the damn. Blowhead. 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 From, you see that? I'm 105, nigga. That career road, 105, added crew lit. Blowhead was the first nigga to do the east side stomp. That's added crew lit. That's who started that shit. Yeah. Nigga, point blank, that was it. If you wanna know where the shit, the buck stops in the store, nigga, I'll let you know. Let go on get to whatever you wanna know and how it work. Alright, so who are who are the real Atlanta dance legends? Like who are the people that A Dog, Bounce Master J, I don't know a bunch of them nigga. I want you gotta think like that. Pretty King was a dancing ass nigga, that's my nigga. Sean Paul a dancing ass nigga. You might need to get them niggas in here for them dancing nigga. A dog can tell y'all that shit. We was outside trying to steal some cars or some other shit when niggas inside dancing and shit. So I don't know, like it was. I get the dance and shit. Only thing I wanted to do was get me some nylon pants and pull my shit up where a girl can dance on my joints. <laughs> so I really wasn't no goddamn dancer there, nigga, like that. So just right. being real. I remember you told me another story about T Rock. T Rock was my nigga. T Rock, still and, my nigga. And, and you said something about he basically got jumped on by DJ Paul and well, it was I think some it was, other guys. I think it was Crunchy. And, I think it was oh, Impact. Crunchy. It was it was Impact Revenge. So what happened was they were floating to him. They had Impact. Everything went down to Impact Revenge. My name Freddie King was just talking about this shit on his show the other day. With, cause they were trying to jump Master P, not Master P, but uh, Pastor Troy and that bitch. Remember he had We Ready? Yeah. So we was at the Opry Lane Hotel. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Opera Land Hotels, Impact Convention. So at this time, Project Pat, I never forget this shit. Pat had just got banged up for the second time when me, Lola was out the group. So Lola was living with me and my mom and got there in Atlanta, nigga. He, he. So we we was riding up, that's when the simple time on, we was riding up to meet them in Nashville because Impact was the biggest convention period. So we in that bitch, that one King was talking about, nigga, that one, uh, that's what we ready. Get Man, they were chasing mail all around the hotel. Every nigga, I wait, got. Wait, 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 wait. They were chasing. They asked Troy around the hotel. Well, they was. Everybody was about to get into it. This shit was the most violent shit ever. So, at this time, Patty just got banged up again for the second time. So, they could. They came, but they had to leave. So, we had to represent 
hypnotized mind all the time, me and Lola. So we had these big ass sweets, other shit. Man, it was, I'm about to tell you some real story about some lame ass nigga. What? And that nigga don't know, man. You, you about to get all the scoop, Sean. Hey, so I never forget this shit, cause of course niggas wanted to fuck my girl and shit, boo and shit. And so I never forget this shit, nigga. The impact was crazy. We walking down the hall, we run into Twister, right? Twisting that motherfucker deep. Deep, nigga. I got my nine on me, nigga. I keep my nine on me and day back then. So I'm a nine in my shit. I hear Twister say some shit. Twister like, what you here with that lame man? I said, what the fuck this nigga say? <laughs> and he, she so, she know how I am. This nigga so deep. I like, yeah, I like looking lame right now. And I'm the only nigga around it, but I'm about to goddamn air this motherfucking whole goddamn uh, hallway up. It was deep, they just knew they were gonna be the nigga up. I like, ooh, I do this shit, shorty. Let's do it. <laughs> so at the same time, I'm about to get back to your story too. So Floaty and them were down there, Ken was down there, and they knew T-Rock was my nigga. Cause he had signed with 3-6, right? But he from Atlanta. All I heard was, man, they got your nigga. They got your nigga down there. They jumping or they jumping. Nigga, I'm running down the hall, nigga. I got my nine on me steel and day. So, nigga, by this time, they done jumped on him or something, snatched him out the chair. He gone, everybody gone, they were fucked up. Then right after that, they left and got out of town because of Project Pack. Because probably think Project Pack got caught with the gun up under his seat at that time or some other shit. But, I remember that event. Everything was going on there. That before I really knew Troy. I'd have been fighting with Troy too, but I didn't really know Troy like that. <laughs> so I like it. I ain't about to help you fight for T Rock with my little nigga. And yeah, Troy been trying to stay relevant. That's, he is relevant. Yeah. Troy dope. He's doing a lot of stuff. He all, he all over the radio. Mm -hmm. You know? He going to stay relevant anyway because UGA going to make him relevant. He's smart guy. You know what I'm saying? Great, great guy. I love you, Troy, my nigga. Yeah, that. That um, we ready was an anthem for it's the whole an city. It's you know an anthem. Saying? I can remember personally going to the bounce, and Troy was on stage. He didn't even have a microphone, just the new GA helmet on. That's all he needed. And if you remember how big the bounce was, I do. It was packed. I remember. And the energy from them running that one song, it felt like the whole club was. was by, yeah, I believe it. And that's a lot of that's you, a lot of that's a lot got, of power and influence. You got to think back then, man. Troy had one of the big. Everybody, you got to think this nigga wasn't even from Atlanta at this time. Georgia, everybody got behind this nigga. Like, nigga, ain't no fucking thing. Ain't no playing, nigga. That shit was huge. Yeah, it was. I actually remember going to Payne because that's where he went to school at. Gotcha. We was on the road. I slapped the nigga out from Payne. Yeah, we was on the road. This is actually when like your album was coming out. I was trying to like the Great Conjunction. Yeah. Oh, that's a classic. I was your rock. I was, no, no, no. It was decade. It was decade. Ah, uh, that's decade. dope too. It was the first decade. That's dope. It's not quite as when dope. The first but it's decade dope. came out. I was at Payne University trying to sell that, and then they were trying to sell me past Detroit. They're like, Nah, that's shit. I said, Nah, that's shit. Nigga on the couple like that, nigga, they working there. Yeah. with that, yeah. Troy got them killing man. Yeah. My bro. Yeah. Okay. I want to um kind of take it back and just you know keep. Keep the conversation, you know what I'm saying, uh, weaving in and out, man. Gotcha. Go back a little bit because you touched on a couple of times about your, um, your what you feel is your purpose in this world. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like to serve your people um, and talk a little bit about because you mentioned about how Chuck D was a uh, well, influence on you. Hold up, before you go there, I want to link you in right here to say. Talk a little bit about how you feel, even your father and where your family is from, and uh, just you know, let us know about your, you know, your roots. Well, my roots like this, man. My dad, I didn't realize what my dad was instilling in me when I was a young child. So you got to think, when I was younger, I'm different. Like niggas don't know this shit. D knows this shit. A lot of people don't know this shit. Y'all getting this shit down for the first time. And then when I was younger, my dad had me listen to Dr. Francis Quest Wilson tapes, tapes, Maxwell tapes, Malcolm X speeches, uh, public enemy. So you gotta think, nigga, you gotta think, I, that was my foundation. I already had that nigga in elementary school. Nigga, this can't be lame, elementary school. So then when I get older, I'm doing cocaine, I'm bucking, I'm doing this. So niggas only know the wild buck moss beat, right? So I never forget my little cousin, Nicole Richie, right? 
So I remember this. I remember all the things I used to teach her and I tell her when she was younger, right? So I remember my auntie used to tell me shit like this. She's like, uh, but everybody was scared in the cold, but I knew what it was with me too. They were like, you need to come get your cousin. She doing this, she doing that. I said, nigga, she got the foundation. She gonna have the bounce back effect. Nigga, the foundation always gives you the bounce back effect. So a lot of motherfuckers, when they see me post shit and what I'm doing now, what I'm doing in the community, like, where did all this come from? Where did all this come hey, from? No, no, that's funny. No, cause somebody said like, does this dude have a publicist or something? Like, do you have a publicist? No, well, let me let me finish it. Come, I'm, I'm, so like, where does all this come from? It's the backbone. So nigga, I had already had this. So through all my goddamn going to prison, all my monkey shit, all the fucked up shit, I always had the backbone, nigga. That was that was the buck shit. That was the shit out of bucket. So I was always able to bounce back. That's the bounce back. Baby. So your, your your shit is your foundation is your bounce back. So all that shit when niggas thought I was a fool, nigga, I wasn't never no fool. It was just some shit I was trying to figure out. But that's what gave me who I am today. And that's why the kids able to relate to me and I can fuck with them and the rest of shit. And I understand, nigga, I have empathy and I understand, nigga, I understand. I understand what the fuck you going through. Yeah. I understand, nigga, when I felt like a, I was a junkie. I understand, nigga, nigga, I understand this shit, cuz. That's my biggest thing is, I remember one time I asked God this, this some real shit. I said, I want to feel the pain of my others so I know what it feels. And nigga, and they gave me that superpower, the worst shit ever I asked for. But that's why I'm able to build and go through different shit and have that effect of what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? With the, with the, with building it. Like, and so my whole mission and my whole goal today is, that shit ain't about me, nigga. I'm old, I'm fucked up in my ways, da da da. It's about, it's about nation building and rebuilding the youth. The whole thing about this shit is this, man. This is the worst shit ever. Our parents did the best they could do, right? Nobody wants to take the hit, cuz. Somebody gotta take the hit. Somebody like somebody can't be in the club. Somebody can't be fucked up. Somebody gotta, somebody gotta be the motherfucker be like, okay, nigga, I'm just gonna be miserable. So I no, for real. This for real, cuz. Somebody gotta be, it's gotta be two, three generations of miserable motherfuckers just to be for motherfuckers that you don't even know. So would you say that our ancestors were that for us? No, I would not say that. You know why I would say that? You got to think how many years we out of slavery. We only a hundred years out of slavery. We got one minute. All right. So what the shit? We got one minute. Fuck it. <laughs> hey, 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 shout out. Any shout outs? Any outro comments? Remarks? Nothing. No. <laughs> Hell no. First of all, hey, give a shout what? out to Slush Natural. Ah, there you go, there you go, yeah. Yeah, hold one of these Slush Natural. Yeah, that's JD, Jermaine Dupree's brand right there. You know what I'm saying? JD, you got your goddamn hair together yet? <laughs> you stop using all that Beijing in your shit, man. That's a nice goddamn drink you got going on, man. You goddamn, you're older than me, nigga. How you ain't got no grain in your beard, nigga? And I got some grain in my beard. Shout out to Slush.